All right, let's hope this. <laughs> I do better this time. Sorry about all the recording issues, but maybe, maybe it's just not all meant to be heard at once. So I know I'm getting into deeper, raw issues. So, uh, all right, I guess right now, uh, sorry, I don't know where I got cut off, but I'm going to focus on blame versus self-responsibility. So I know in today's society, we're taught to blame um, ourselves, blame others, blame, you know, everything, everything outside of ourselves. That does not mean we should blame ourselves, right? Like a lot of uh, <clears throat> pseudo spiritual teachings or well, what's in you that, you know, makes you beat up, make, makes you get beat up by psychopaths, insinuating that you're a psychopath and that's why you brought it on because there's nothing out there that, that you're not and they're just showing you who you are. And I'm sorry, but those are psychopathic teachings taught by psychopaths trying to get you to blame yourself. No, it's not about self-blame. And I fell for that trap. Dude, I blame myself 40 something years, okay? Don't do what I did. <laughs> All right, what it's about is self-responsibility. So instead of blaming yourself and looking at, you know, like, oh gosh, why did I do that? Why did I stay in this relationship so long? Why did I, why am I so stupid? How did I get tricked again? how, you know, whatever it is, you turn it into how can I take responsibility so that it no longer happens, that this shit ends today, right now, right? Okay, because once you're at that point, clearly you've explored other options. You've asked yourself, hmm, is it all in my head? You know, you've gotten through all of that, right? So now once you know, you have to take responsibility for you. No buddy is going to come down on a spaceship and rescue you and just all of a sudden insert you into these wonderful, oh, you can see the smoke from the incense. Or I don't know if you can see it, but I can. That's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, but nobody is going to do that for you. So that's where self-responsibility comes in. It's not self-blame by getting you to look at what you... Okay, here's the deal. In most abusive relationships, nobody is holding a gun to your head. I realize there's threats. I realize there are lifelong scars of physical abuse. I, I realize the dangers. But if nobody is holding a gun, forcing you to stay, the only thing keeping you from walking outside that door is you and your fear prison, right? So that's where we have to take responsibility for ourselves, not responsibility for what psychopaths are teaching you, not responsibility for whatever trauma or this and that, you know, that's not what it's about. I mean, and if you did truly do something or someone wrong or whatever, then, you know, address it, take responsibility, right? And move on again, no blame because we all do the best we can do with exactly what we know based on our current and past circumstances, okay? So no need for self-blame. Don't beat yourself up like that. And if there are any people in your life that are blaming and shaming you or, oh, you brought it on yourself or this and that, bullshit, okay? But again, that doesn't mean deflect responsibility. You can't just sit there and be like, oh, poor me, you don't understand. He's so mean to me. She's so mean to me. I don't understand. Oh, why can't she be nice? I'm... Dude, that's where you have to grow a backbone and take responsibility for yourself. You can't change them, but you can change yourself. You can't change how other people treat you, right? But you can change what you accept. Yeah. I had an experience like that recently at work. Um, and there, you know, were probably, let's just say they were childish games that went too far. And I'm talking too far, like bullying, name calling, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking about 
you know, how am I going to address this? I'm noticing nobody else is seeing. So what am I going to do? Go be a tattletale? No, you know, so I thought about it and I let it eat me up inside. And then, you know, I'm like, okay, I got to address this. Just waiting for the right time. And then one day it happened again in the name calling. And I just, you know, looked at the person and said, look, this is not okay. You know, go pick on somebody else. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. This abuse is not all right. And then I get, you know, the same minimization and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right, that's it. So I went straight to the boss. I said, you know what? You might not be aware of this, but I did try talking to you a few times. You know, there was other drama going on. So I let it go again. Right now, this has to end today, one way or another. So when's a good time to talk? <laughs> and it felt good. I was like, wow, I did it. And... You know, and it wasn't with blame. It wasn't with anything. And like, even when I, you know, talk about the AA meeting, when I went with my friend and I'm like, hi, I'm addicted to pain and this and that. I didn't go into the reasons like, I'm addicted to pain because I was traumatized. But there was no blame on anyone. I was just looking at it for what it is, the circumstance we're in today, which is just temporary. And again, a product, a result of where you have been before. Again, not your fault, nothing to blame. They are all lessons. So why do we have such a hard time looking at things clearly that we love pain? more than we don't love it. And we can prove that by the choices that we make in life. That doesn't mean that you are doomed to forever, you know, eternal damnation. You can change it just like I did, right? And I've had many freaking tests along the way to show that I really, 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 really <laughs> did learn that lesson. And, you know, it's not pain... It's not, it's, it is painful sometimes, not without pain, is I think what I was trying, sometimes my mind moves faster than my lips do, Blah. but, um, yeah, there's a difference between blame and responsibility, and we can take responsibility for ourselves, that doesn't mean take responsibility for another's actions or abuse or whatever towards you or for all the world's problems. Oh, you brought it on with your thoughts. Yeah, you, you totally begged to, you know, be locked in cages at freaking six years old and watched people burn. Yeah, right. Bullshit. No, that's trauma that needs to be dealt with. And even if you did go back to a narcissistic abuser, big fucking deal. So did I. Whatever. We live and learn, right? Hopefully, hopefully. Not everybody does learn, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that if you're watching my videos, you are on that self-growth, self-love journey. And it's a long one, as I've shared with you. You know, some of the silly mistakes, but they're not, you know, I make fun of myself, but they're not mistakes. They're, look, even these, the most horrible, people or things done or whatever that we've experienced in our lives. Think of the meanest person you know. They were there for our growth. I think, like, I, t I don't know what video I talked about this in, but I'm in a sports museum. I'm in a sports museum because I had fucked up coaches, okay? I mean, I had a great pitching coach, you know, Birdie, Lloyd Birdsong, he was awesome, and, you know, Mr. Garcia, and, you know, a few nice people along the way, but I didn't become <clears throat> as great as I was because everybody was nice and made it easy and handed it to me. It was hard work. And some of the friction, right, of the hardline coaching techniques and stuff, which you look at it and you're like, oh my God, that's abuse. That's horrible. If you look at one instance, right? But here all these years later and look, yeah, it still is that, but what did it do for me? Turn me into a rock star. Really? Like how many people do you know in a museum? Not bragging. I'm just saying. 
so these people, these jerks, these meanies, these whatever you want to call them, like blah, 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 wh whoever they are, really, we can replace all those labels with teacher. There's nice teachers, nice, sweet, you know, and then there's the fuck you, I hate you, and I'm here for your greater growth. You just don't see it yet because we're inside the fishbowl. Yeah. So self-blame and self-responsibility are not the same. When I suggest to people that they need to take responsibility for their environment, that's not some bullshit, you know, law of attraction or change your thinking, your thoughts create everything or any of that abusive psychopathic garbage. No, because some things you can't just wave a magic wand. Well, sometimes we can, but not really okay you're setting things in motion and you're not only dealing with your lessons you're also involved in other people's lessons and there's a lot of dynamics going on here and then it's not just the people that you can physically see it's the people and entities and things that you can't see so yeah it's really dumb to fall for that uh new age blame shame you know but again that does not circumvent taking responsibility and hightailing it out of wherever you need to do, right? Wherever that is, family, relationship, work, what, whatever that is. Because sitting there and just, oh my God, poor me, you know, the rest of your life, dude, come on, feel it, feel the pain, feel the betrayal, feel the loss, feel the trauma, grieve. Do it all, every emotion, scream, cry, sleep, do whatever you need to do, but let it go and work on again. It's about loving yourself and self-improvement. Is loving yourself sitting in misery and feeling powerless, telling yourself you suck? No, it's going out and taking risks and taking chances. And you know what? I ended up doing a whole bunch of freaking shit that I had no idea that I could do until when after I had to do it. So it's crazy when people look at me and they're like, oh my God, Christy, you're so cool. I could never build my own house or I could never do this or I could never blah, blah, blah. I couldn't either, <laughs> right? And then the need for my freedom and self-love outweighed the fear that would have stopped me from trying and sent me back into an abusive, limiting, soul-sucking, conscious, suppressing environment. I want to touch on that again, and I should make it its own video, but again, many of us who are in these environments, we end up diagnosed with autoimmune issues, fibromyalgia, MS, lupus, Hashimoto's, like all sorts of autoimmune issues, rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, I'm diagnosed with everything I just said except Hashimoto's. Yeah. So again, speaking through experience, that is the result of not loving ourselves, not listening to our intuition, not taking responsibility. It's when our body says no, because we can't say the word. Right? So a lot of us, we take on lots of responsibilities and want to give to other people. You're probably the one that, you know, worked overtime, raised the family, still had three meals a day on the table at all times and, and packed lunches and like 15 volunteer organizations and fed the home, you know, blah. you did all that. Mm -hmm. And then you got to a point where you thought, well, if I didn't do that, somebody would be mad and they wouldn't like me or I'd, I'd disappoint, you know, whatever, right? So your body kind of said, well, dude, <laughs> if you're not going to take that day of rest, I'm going to have to kind of make you and it's not going to be fun. And then you're going to be caught up in this other world of doctors and misdiagnoses and brain disabling, not immune suppressing drugs and go down this spiral when really you could have just loved yourself and gotten away from the toxic environment in the first place and just because you do that doesn't mean you're like boom okay self-love i got this it's never going to happen again that's not true again anyone who's watched my videos or knows me has seen firsthand 
Look, even that acid trip video I made, I posted it last year, but it was from four years ago. And I, there was the morning after, and I talked about um, the revelations I made. I, I had those revelations there. What did I do? I still freaking did it. I still kept falling for, briefly, the lures. Some of them lasted a half a day. Some of them lasted two weeks or a week or whatever, but the tests were there. And some of them I even moved into, other bigger tests, like in Go Look at Coffee with Christy, the first videos. They were freaking, that's kind of paradise. A lot of people would give up their soul and tolerate abuse to live amongst that opulence, right? So there's tests along the way. What are you going to choose? Self-love or the path you already know? The path you already know already feels like shit, right? You can do something different. Mm -hmm. And be gentle with yourself. Love yourself, okay? Don't forget, you know, just ugh. be gentle with yourself. Don't be me. Don't be a freaking perfectionist Virgo and I have to have all the answers now and I got to do it right and keep yourself up all night with blah. No, love yourself. The simple things. Go outside, look at something pretty, talk to birds, deer, whatever. But yeah, gentleness. I think I'm out of things to say right now on this video uh, without being cut off. That's really what a cool feeling. Um, but I do want to talk more about self-love and even maybe do some self-love Q&As. I, now that I have a home and internet and can hook up a computer, I am having computer issues sound and YouTube changed again. I mean, I was doing these videos back in the day of direct live upload and that was it. And then you had to do like Google Hangouts and all these other things, which I was homeless, so I wasn't able to do. And then now they just changed it again and you need some special, I don't even know how to do it. So if you know how I can do uh, like live YouTube videos and question and answer sessions like on these topics, self-love, self-hate, addiction to fear, every mistake I've ever freaking made in my life and how I learned a better way, like whatever. I really want to do that. I mean, I guess if so, if you know how to do that and can help me with that, that would be awesome or any other type of web help, like maybe doing recorded Skype interviews, calls that I could then later upload, but I really do miss doing live radio and just live interaction with the people and being able to answer your questions. I know I blab and and just like go all over on tangents and I usually get back to the point, but when I keep getting cut off and stuff, then you know, whatever. It's like, whatever. But yeah, I, I want to get back into doing live stuff. I like interaction with real people and having you keep me focused on questions and, you know, things that you want to know. So I need to find a way to do that. I guess I'm just putting it out there. And if there's somebody who can realistically help um, get me online like normal with like the proper softwares and settings and technical ability to do those things, then please let me know. Until then, I'll see you next time. Christy Aphrodite here on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, I don't know. I can't remember everywhere, wherever. <laughs> and frozen moments. Don't, oh yeah, I should kind of promote myself once in a while because I have to eat too. And hey, that's self-love. And these YouTube videos, you know, I don't, they don't let anyone see them and they all get demonetized and whatever. Things have changed. So, you know, um, yeah, I do, if you are familiar with any of my photos or artwork, please check my Facebook pages or my Instagram, instagram.com, Christy Aphrodite. Um, most of those photos, well, I guess there you go, can be blown up, and I also make greeting cards, so basically anything from $5 budget, a uh, $2 budget, that's right, a $2 budget. Uh, up to as much as you would like to exchange for 
something pretty and meaningful on your wall. But uh, yeah, these photos, in case you didn't know, were all taken on my homeless journey, my soul journey, my transformation. And that is another goal. They're going to be a book, um, the photos and all the feeling and everything behind it on my journey. And yep, so technical help would be really cool if there's anyone. And thanks for being here. And I'm sorry I'm not, like, I feel bad that I hurt people's feelings, you know, but it's certainly not intentional. I'm just direct. I'm that's all. It's not like, I'm not name calling. Like people always freaking revert and start calling me names. You know, I'm not, I'm just like, this is what it is. Like, do you want the actual truth? Like, why are you asking the question? Don't, don't ask a freaking Virgo Sagittarius if you don't want to know the truth. So I'll just do these videos and talk to myself and no one, you know, then no one will beat me up. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Love you. Self-love is love. That's how you heal the world. Self-love, right? Self-love, heal yourself, and the world will follow. Because when people see it, they want it. Yeah, and the ones who don't, oh well, you love yourself and love them by letting them be exactly who they are. You can't turn a tick into a butterfly. Not everybody is meant to wake up. And it is not your job to wake people up. Besides, if you actually effectively want to wake people up, you're not going to do it sitting on a computer on Facebook all day. You're going to do that by going forth, going outside, interacting with people, touching them directly, hearing them, listening to them, sharing a genuine smile, letting them know you understand that they're not alone in whatever struggle that they're having because we're all having some type of struggle, pretty much. Actually... I'm not right now. Feels weird to say for the first time in my life. I mean, you know, I have a minimum wage, part-time job, so, you know, things are tight. You know, I've got some bills, and, you know, it's not, like, easy, but I don't really... The veil's been lifted, and it's 100% due to self-love. Self-love heals all. All right, bye. Yeah, send your questions. Oh, I gotta turn this off.